what is Bitcoin? How does it work? Nobody was thinking about Bitcoin when they came up with the definition of the term security. But there she is. That's the definition. You're going to have to learn to work with that. You can't make Bitcoin go away. How are we going to have these two regimes communicate? Sometimes Bitcoin can be a security, and sometimes it won't be a security. You haven't had any court, you haven't had the SEC take a position with regard to whether Bitcoin itself is a security or not. We know that if you have a partnership and the partnership buys Bitcoin, then that partnership can be exactly like a partnership that buys a horse. And in that situation, your interest in the partnership that owns the Bitcoin, that's a security. That's not complicated at all. But the more interesting question that, no, that, that the courts and the SEC haven't yet looked at is the challenge of whether the Bitcoin itself is a security. And there, the answer, I think, is a resounding sometimes. And I think the SEC hasn't taken a position on it yet because it doesn't have to. All of the problems that the SEC has run into up until this point, they've been able to handle all of those issues within the four corners of existing precedent. Nothing has forced the SEC carefully and aggressively to examine the more difficult question of whether and when Bitcoin is a security. To determine whether Bitcoin is or isn't a security, you apply what lawyers call the investment contract test. Is there an investment of money? Is there an expectation of profit? Uh, is there something that's called commonality? And are you relying on the efforts of others? Well, when you use Bitcoin to buy a cup of coffee on campus here at Coupa Cafe, there's no expectation of profit. You know, you're not relying on the efforts of others for any of your return. There's nothing that the lawyers call commonality. So when you use Bitcoin for a cup of coffee, that's not a securities transaction, and that's not a security. So the securities laws would have nothing to do with that. On the other hand, suppose you go on the Internet and you buy $200,000 of Bitcoin, and you stick it in your electronic wallet, and you're going to hold it there for four or five years thinking that Bitcoin will double or triple. Well, under those circumstances, it's very easy to describe that transaction as involving the purchase and sale of a security. You've got investment of money. You've got an expectation of profit. You're relying on the efforts of others. The others here are the miners that, in effect, have to operate the Bitcoin system in order to validate every transaction. We know that we can package interests in Bitcoin so that those interests are securities. That's easy. But the interesting question is, and the law hasn't gotten here yet, is Bitcoin itself a security? I think Bitcoin's future in the United States is potentially quite different than it is outside the United States. Um, I think Bitcoin's going to run into real hurdles, uh, becoming a mechanism for exchange that will be broadly accepted uh, in the United States. But if you're going to try to, you know, move value from a place like, uh, um, you know, United Arab Emirates to uh, the Philippines, or, you know, you want to move value from Indonesia to Pakistan, uh, you can imagine many of these different systems working well in that kind of an environment. Whether they're going to wind up working well in the United States with all of our um, uh, know your customer regulations, banking regulations, anti-money laundering regulations, uh, Regulation E, securities laws and the like, I'm skeptical about whether that technology is going to be able to get traction once you load that technology on with all of the legal compliance that's really necessary to work in the United States.